Good evening. Uh, I was uh, on JIRP in 1970. Uh, earlier in the program this year, our medical doctor, Dr. Al Pinchak, was on the program in 65. So when he left the ice, I had the dubious distinction of being the most senior uh, person on the ice. And so I've seen the program go through a lot of periods over its time. So where are we right now? I think you have seen uh, these presentations and having been involved in student, pres student research projects for the last 20 years, I can definitely tell you that JERP is doing exceptionally well. JERP has come a long ways over the 67 years since its inception. And how did we get there? We got there by a tremendous amount of work by Dr. Maynard Miller and his wife, Joan Miller. Uh, and it's very reassuring to know that their vision of educationally increasing, giving education and inspiration to these young geoscientists that you see seen tonight and the 1,600 other participants over those years is continuing and going ahead full steam. Um, the, uh, the, um, the program began in 1946 when Dr. Miller got some support from the military to investigate ice, particularly because the glaciers were very similar to the ice pack and they wanted to put submarines under the ice pack and during the, the Cold War. So it began with a 10-year project with the American Geographic Society and military funding. And then about 1960, we uh, were behind the Russians, supposedly. And so there was a big push to create uh, scholarships for students to create scientists and to catch up. And I was one of those students in 1970 who received a full scholarship uh, support to come on JERP and do my research on the von Ross ice fall and those wave bulges. But around 1971, Dr. Miller gave a lecture to the academy, the Army Academy, in which he mentioned that uh, air pollution from humans is affecting climate and is going to begin to affect uh, the glaciers. Later in about 1985, he specifically wrote this in a peer-reviewed uh, journal article about how climate change is drastically affecting and could get much serious in the future. So we have a long history of working in, on climate change and that is continuing today where when we were very fortunate this summer to have one of the top climate scientists in the world, Dr. Ben Santer, an author of every IPCC report come and give us lectures on climate change. And he fell in love with the ice field and he said he's gonna plan his summer, next summer around JERP. So, um, <clears throat> then with the death of Joan Miller and Dr. Miller's uh, uh, um, period, went into a period where he was uh, less and less involved with the leadership and the planning of JERP. It was Scott McGee, who works for the Fish and Wildlife Service in Anchorage, our field director, and myself who kind of stepped up and tried to create, a, keep things going for a period of time. Jay Fleischer came on board, and I'm very proud to say that we've transitioned this transition period exceptionally well, and, and uh, uh, during that time, Dr. Miller has been very, healthy and his, uh, his spirits are up and he is uh, living in his house in Moscow and, and on his 90th birthday a year ago we had a surprise birthday party for him and his son, son Ross brought a package of hats for everyone, the, the classic symbol of Jerp history and we had a grand old time. We made a nice birthday cake for him and you can see the ice fell depicted on that cake and Dr. Miller is still full of gusto blowing out the candles on his cake and we all sat around and swapped stories. We gave him a specially prepared jacket with the logo of Jerp on the back and he was extremely pleased and, uh, and we all enjoyed the company of many former Jerpers who traveled from Alaska and Florida all over the place to come celebrate his 90th birthday. I was also fortunate uh, last fall after the last year's program to go to the annual meeting of the Geologic Society of America with Jer Jay Fleischer arranged a special session all morning long for honoring Dr. Miller and his life achievements in geology and inspiration for many of the scientists like myself. And um, that is really a story where we have changed 
wild and crazy jerpers like me in 1970 to hopefully becoming a uh, professor that's a more or less professional. It would, and for me, if it wasn't for JERP, I wouldn't be standing in front of students next month lecturing in physics in Portland. But we've also had a very exceptional uh, student who was inspired by JERP, Steve Squires, who was a high school student just like uh, uh, Lindsay and uh, the students before you tonight in 1974. And he didn't know what he wanted to do. He was, uh, uh, didn't really be, he wasn't really interested in science particularly, but when he went up on the ice field and he explored regions that were unknown and mapped uh, areas that were unknown, he got the, the excitement of science, went into geology, and became the principal investigator for the Marsh Rover Program. So I walked in with Dr. Miller through that door in front of the audience of 150 scientists, and Steve looked at him and he said, Dr. Miller, I haven't seen you in 30 years. He said, you're the reason I went into geology. You're the reason that I became a space scientist. And later, a few months later, uh, Steve wrote me a letter and said that if it wasn't for JERB, the rovers that are uh, on, the two rovers that were on the moon now for several years and the new one who just landed on the moon would not be there today had he not been on JERB in 1974. So that's one of our proud uh, uh, gems of accomplishment for inspiration. Uh, and now with the directorship of Jeff, we move into a new age, and I can tell you that the student reports this year are exactly what he said. We're incorporating modern equipment, modern uh, uh, scientific investigations, and we're expanding for the future. Uh, so, uh, this year we started in June and ended in August, 15 students. Uh, Jay Fleischer has turned the reins over to Jeff and uh, we had a special program of emergency medical response training from her, Dr. Hernando Garzon who was the lead doctor in the 9-11 uh, medical response and also the Katrina response and he gave many interesting lectures. Chip Duncan came up to continue his work on filming for a PBS special for the future. He said he's definitely coming back next summer to finish it. His special on Ronald Reagan will air in, uh, he's done 44 PBS specials, and his special on Ronald Reagan will air in February. So, JERP is alive and well, and we'll be back here next year to see you in 2013.